Hi there everyone, I'm Nilim and you're here with me on Food and Travel Escapades by Nil. Today I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie board. But first up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon at the bottom so that you will be notified every time I post a new video. Charcuterie boards or cheese platters have become so popular in the recent days. They have become a must at parties and even I uh, offer a cheese platter or a charcuterie board whenever I entertain guests at home. But I know a lot of people go out and buy these but they are actually very simple to make and I am going to show you how to make your very own charcuterie board. So what does a charcuterie board have? Well you can have some mix of cheeses, uh, soft, medium and hard and you can have some um, cold cuts like uh, cured or uh, smoked meats and then you can have some fresh or uh, dried uh, fruits and a dip perhaps and some um, pickled vegetables or canned uh, veggies uh, and some nuts in there and a little bit of garnish. You can also use something sweet like honey or a jam um, and it all depends on how you mix your cheeses with your meats. I've been using Lux Colombo to order my cheeses and cold cuts since their inception. They're very efficient and they deliver and their service is excellent. So I've ordered a brie, uh, some soft goat cheeses, uh, a blue um, and a mature cheddar which is uh, a little hard and uh, also some prosciutto, uh, some salami and uh, salami pepperoni and there's also a cranberry goat cheese and some chorizo and some red chilies. Uh, so let's play them up. So first you'll need a board. Uh, you can use uh, a stone board like this or you can even use uh, pretty much a uh, wood chopping board. Um, if not, you can also use uh, a tray with uh, with a uh, edge where you can use that to support uh, things like crackers and stuff. And uh, so let's get started. I'm going to assemble the cheeses first. Arrange, arranging the cheeses will help you sort of figure out the space and uh, assemble things depending on the size of your board. So this you can serve it as it is. So I like to go to the center here. And then let's take that blue. Some people don't like blue, but I just love blue. So I'm just going to have that to have somewhere here. If you think you must show the veins, you can actually lift it up slowly and turn it over. Then next up, I'm going to take the soft goat cheese. So the hard cheeses must be cut into small slices so that it's easy to eat. So something I like to do is make them into little sticks. And do a little Jenga thing with them. Next, let's place the um, cold cuts. So prosciutto is uh, great to go with the brie. So I'm going to place them next to the brie. So I like to kind of ruffle them up. You can um, place them however you like. You can just leave them out as it is but to make it look prettier I like to just sort of ruffle them up like this and place it around the cheese it looks prettier it saves space so you can use the rest of the space on the board uh, so it all depends on how you want it you can just fold them in half so you can do whatever you like but I like to do this sort of thing so it looks pretty and I like the white part to come on top, the, the fat layer to be on top so it looks pretty. You don't have to really use the whole pack so it depends on the number of guests you have and exactly what you're serving. So yeah, I think that should do. I'm using the other side for other things and I'm going to get rid of that one. So there is also salami, beef salami with chicken. So now these guys can either go flat as they are in a line like this. So I will place them in between here. 
since they stick to the board, uh, they are okay to go on the edges because otherwise what happens when you put things like uh, grapes and nuts or whatever on the edges, uh, they just tend to fall off the plate. So I'm going to use this guy here and I'm going to use the salami pepperoni. This is kind of a spicy one and it's nice. Ideally, if they were bigger, you can actually roll them up into little flowers like this to make it look prettier. So if you can find the space, I like to use them with the cheddar. Next, you got to place the crackers. So you have to have space. Um, so that's why I left the center of the plate empty so I can lay out the crackers in a nice design. I love these uh, cheese chili crackers and potato crackers. So you got to use ones that are not broken so they will look nice. You can have some French bread if you want. So you can see I've placed it uh, in a little curve here where the salami is going in a curve and the crackers are going in the same curve. I'm going to get these guys to go around here. Stop here. Next up, the fruits. So always try and break the colors so that way you have a very pretty, very colorful platter. Uh, so I'm going to use some green grapes and perhaps leave it somewhere here. Because it seems like it needs a bit of color here. You can use these to actually fix um, the crackers that are falling off as for support. Yeah, and then we can use a little bit of black color grapes. So I'm going to place the black grapes here. So your olives can go in somewhere as well, like this. If you have uh, a dip that can go in in a corner as well. So make space for all these guys. Then next up is a little bit of garnishing. If you want, you can have some gherkin, but my platter is already full, so I'm just going to leave the gherkin out. Um, you can use some honey if you want, and that's amazing with actually uh, the blue cheese. So I'm just going to leave this guy here in the corner and push it all in. Right, and uh, if you want more color, I'm going to use a little bit of orange because orange and honey is also very nice together. Orange and honey and blue cheese is just amazing. Here you're looking at pieces for garnishing. So make sure they're cut very nicely and in even sizes. Be sure to take out the seeds because you don't want your guests eating seeds. If you feel you need to bring in a little bit of red color here, I think we could use a little bit of red color in here. So let's use that space as well. I'm going to add in the chorizo as well because uh, they look very pretty. You can use a holder like this actually to have them or you can just, just drop it anywhere if you would see it fits well. I'm just going to have these guys at the corner here, making a stack like that. And then I think I can bring in a little greenery here and there. And of course, yes, there's also dried fruits if you want to add somewhere, if you feel it brings a little bit of pops, pops the color a little bit. So perhaps somewhere here. And you can Drop in a few dried cranberry on top of the brie. That looks pretty too. Like that. Okay, so we got some nuts and you can use some walnuts on the corners here to fill the spaces a bit. Like that. And maybe a few pistachio. Have them have the, uh, the shelled one because you don't want your guests, you know, trying to break their teeth, trying to open them up. So just drop that here, just a few. You can use some rosemary sprigs uh, or whatever you feel like. I mean, you know, anything that looks pretty on the plate, um, but any bird stuff. Go with one long sprig and then use the smaller ones around it. So I think this guy is good to go. 
so let that come in from here perhaps you can find the best body it doesn't have to be the same there is no hard and fast rule as to how you can use your garnishing so um, you just pick and choose what goes best where and uh, yeah, maybe a little bit here as well so there you have it this is the charcuterie platter it's very simple to make and in case you're wondering what is in the olives uh, you can actually serve olives as they are but i use a mix of olive oil garlic and mixed herbs or orig dried oregano and i just toss them up together and i mix them in the olive so that's what's in there and i'm going to show you how to make the dips this is a chili mayo dip uh, i'm going to show you how to make dips in my next video Then you can use some nuts and just drop it wherever they fit. <laughs>